Hey there, Derek Rydell here, and I'm really excited to talk to you today about what I call the desire code. And desire, it's a really interesting thing, and I'm not talking about like, you know, sexual desire, although that may be a part of the desire. I'm also not talking about what people think when they uh, hear the teachings of Buddha and hear desire is the root of suffering. That's not actually what Buddha taught. Buddha taught craving and aversion is the root of suffering, meaning the incessant need to get or get rid of in order to finally have enough or be enough or feel safe. That incessant need, I need to get, 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 or get rid of, get rid of, if I just get enough and get rid of enough, I'll be okay. That's the root of suffering. But desire, real desire, comes from a root that means of the sire, of the father, or of the creative principle. So desire, when you feel the kick of desire, that is like a, a woman feeling the kick of a baby and knowing she's pregnant for sure. It's not telling her what's outside that she needs to go get. It's telling her what's inside trying to get out. And your burning desire is the same. It's a signal that you've got it. I really want you to hear this. Your burning desire is not a sign of something outside of you that you need to go get. It's a sign of what's inside of you trying to get out. And we mostly have it reversed. And so we, we feel, I want this so badly, and then we just push and strive and struggle to get it from a place of emptiness, lack, fear, and we produce more emptiness, lack, and fear, even if we get the thing we want. We might push and strive to get a bigger paycheck, only to find ourselves just broke at a higher income bracket. And if a pregnant woman acted that way, she feels the kick of the baby, oh my God, I want a baby so bad, and she starts doing all these things to get a baby, pretty soon those big men with you know upper body strength and white jackets are gonna take her away, <laughs> and she's gonna lose her child. And that's what happens to the child of our desire, that we it suffers a stillbirth because we don't recognize that our burning desire is telling us we're pregnant. We've got it. It's of the sire, of the creative force within us. Burning desire, illumination, curiosity, interest, that pull, that is the way life communicates to us. That is the way life tells you what is trying to be born through you, what is trying to emerge as you. Where else are you gonna get, where else are you gonna know what's trying to come through you, if not from your desire? See, and we've gotten reversed. We believe that means we don't have it, and we've been conditioned to believe somebody outside of us knows what we need and want best, right? Our parents, our teachers, the educational system, the marketing world, uh, economy, governments, no, no. They don't know what you really want or need, nobody does. But your signal is the desire. And the reason why most people don't really know what they want is because most people don't give themselves permission to really feel what they want. Why? Because we've gotten the message that it's outside of us and the bigger our want, the more pain there is because the more we believe we are lacking and the more we believe we'll never get what we want. And so we've created a coping mechanism to not feel what I really, really want, right? We, we've created that because if I feel it, I'm gonna feel the pain or I'm gonna feel the guilt or the shame for wanting so much and who am I to want so much and that's selfish and greedy and stingy and it's gonna take away. There's all of this baggage, all of this BS belief systems. <laughs> what were you thinking I meant? There's all of this going on that is filters and filters and filters that doesn't let us feel what we really want. That's God talking to you. That's your soul talking to you. That's the seed of your being planted in the soil of your soul speaking to you, saying, I'm ready to grow. I'm ready to flow. I'm ready to emerge. There's an urgency of emergence. And if you don't listen and answer, it'll turn into an emergency. This is why I always quote the Gospel of Thomas. If you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. That energy of your soul, that energy of your life force, it must come out. If it doesn't come out, it gets corrupted. It wreaks havoc. It starts to come out in different and destructive and aberrated ways. Unexpressed desire, unexpressed creativity. It's not benign, folks. It's not benign. 
it metastasizes. It becomes cancerous. It will eat away at you mentally and emotionally. And I'm not trying to be scary, um, I, but I do want to say beware, which means be aware, be mindful, be careful, be full of self-care. Honor your desire. Give yourself permission. What do you want? What do you really, really want? <sighs> Take a breath right now with me and just drop into that. You know, the average person has a bigger flat screen TV than they do a vision for their life. They don't know what they want. They're being driven by consumer consciousness. And the world is hungering for people who are standing up and expressing who they really are and what they're really made of. Don't ask what the world wants. Ask what makes you come alive and do that. Because you know what the world wants and desperately needs? People who have come alive. Whew. Getting chills. People who have come alive. And you know how you come alive? You know how you activate more of your life force, your genius, your wealth, your abundance, your power? By giving yourself permission to get clear on what you really, really want. And then creating a way of life and developing the character to become it as Gandhi said, become the change you want to see and then to live it. Will you? We need you. The world needs you. Your family needs you. Your kids need you. They need you to own your desire and to let it come out so that you can evolve and bring more and more of you into the world. What do you want? If you knew you couldn't lose, if you knew you were guaranteed success, if I was a genie and I could grant it to you, what do you really, really, really want? Now I say really, 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 so we can move beyond the mere surface, consumer-driven, parental fantasy, peer pressure, societally conditioned wants. I want a bigger TV, I want a bigger house, I want more money, I want safety and security and all of that. Nothing wrong with it. But it's really a, a clue of a deeper need. I want to feel more abundant. I want to feel more free. I want to feel more creative and expressive. So take some time today and get clear. Give yourself some time every day. Have a little bit of a desire. A, you could have a whole desired day or a desired time period every day to get in touch. And as you begin to articulate that for your life in general, you can do it every day for the day. What do I really want today? What do I really, really want today? And when you do that, what you're really getting in touch with is God or life's marching orders for you that day. And you will find that miracles unfold, that you are surprised and delighted by the opportunities and the magic and the fun and the adventure when you start to honor your desire. That's the desire code. It's in you. The answers are in you. Follow that. Your yes. Say yes to your yes today and I can't wait to see what emerges. And until next time, remember, live authentically, love unconditionally, and follow your destiny, your desire code.